HTML forms are the only mechanism available in HTML that is able to send information to the web server. All of the buttons and text boxes that you've added in previous lessons have been form controls. HTML forms are relatively simple, but they are the backbone of ASP.NET. To begin this lesson, open the HTML test sample file from your sample files folder. And open formstest.html in design view. A .html file is a pure HTML file that doesn't contain any of ASP.NET's special features. Browsers will recognize HTML files with both the .htm and .html file extensions, but .html is the file extension favored by Visual Studio 2012. You should recognize the design as an HTML table with some text in the cells. This is going to be your form. Next, you're going to add a text input control. You may need to switch back to the toolbox by clicking Toolbox or by resetting the window layout. Now expand the HTML category and drag an input text control into the box next to Name. The input text control is the HTML equivalent of the ASP.NET text box control, which you'll learn more about in Lesson 4.4. Now set the Name property of the new control to Name. The Name property is used to identify the data that will be sent by the form. You only have to set the name property in this lesson because you're using a pure HTML page. When you start using ASP.NET's controls later on, you won't need to worry about the name property because ASP.NET will handle it automatically. Now in the same way as you did with the text control, add an input checkbox control to the cell next to Confirm. The input checkbox control is the HTML equivalent of the ASP.NET checkbox control, which you'll learn more about in Lesson 4.5. Set the name property of the new text box to Confirm. Next, you'll need to add a button to submit the form. Add an input submit control to the bottom cell of the table. The input submit control is used to send the contents of the form to the server. It's the equivalent of the ASP.NET button control, which you'll learn more about in Lesson 4.2. Next, you'll need to set the action property of the form. Switch to Source View. As you can see, there are no ASP elements on this page. This is a pure HTML page that could be served by any web server to any web browser. Pure HTML code, such as this, can be run on any web server. But that's not true of ASP.NET code. ASP.NET websites must be hosted on a server running the Windows operating system and Microsoft's IIS web server software. Many web hosting services on the internet use the open source Linux operating system and Apache web server. There's a big cost saving associated with this approach, as the web hosting service doesn't have to purchase any software. Linux and Apache are both freeware. While Apache doesn't support ASP.NET, it does support a similar set of technologies 
based upon the PHP programming language. PHP is an open source alternative to ASP.NET, which is favored by hobbyists. Many web bulletin boards can be found, with passionate arguments about whether PHP or ASP.NET is best. There's no real answer to this question, but many agree that PHP is more suitable for smaller projects, while ASP.NET makes it easier to work with larger and more complex projects. Find the form tag in the HTML code now, and set its action property with the code action equals form submit dot ASPX. You could also do this by setting the action property in the properties window. The action property tells the form where to send the data that the user has entered when the submit button is clicked. Form submit dot ASPX is an ASP.NET page that will process the data and display it. When using ASPX pages, you'll never need to manually set the action property. You'll learn more about how ASP.NET sends and receives data in Lesson 3.11. Now let's test the form. View formstest.html in your web browser. Now complete the form and click Submit. You are redirected to formsubmit.aspx, which receives the data that you entered and displays it. Almost everything that ASP.NET does revolves around this system of HTML forms sending data to the web server. Visual Studio generates most of the HTML code that makes this work automatically. But with the knowledge that you've gained from this lesson, you should be able to understand what it is doing behind the scenes. Close your web browser now, and close Visual Studio. And you've now completed Lesson 2.12 – Work with HTML Forms.